Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back. We're looking at question number seven on the 2017 Euclid contest. So, a uh, light bulb question for part A. Lynn is driving at 60 kilometers per hour on a straight highway parallel to a train track. Every 10 minutes, she is passed by a train traveling in the same direction as she is. These trains depart from the station behind her every three minutes and all travel at the same constant speed. What is the constant speed of the trains in kilometers per hour? Hmm. All right. So we know her speed. We don't know the train's speed, but we know every 10 minutes she's passed by one, and yet they're released every three minutes. So I feel like intuitively she must be going faster than the train. Because if they were going faster than her, every th uh, they'd be passing her more quickly. There's, there's three minutes separating every single train, yet she sees them every ten minutes. So if she were still, a train would be passing her every three minutes. Hmm. All right, let's uh, let's see if we can draw a picture of this relationship and maybe clear things up a little bit. Okay. Um. So, she's driving in this direction. She's in her car. She's parallel. Some train tracks. Alright, so a train passes her every 10 minutes. I, now, they didn't mention the, the front of her car or the back of her car, so I don't think there's anything really like that. So. I think it's more something like she's considered a point that's moving at 60 kilometers per hour. And then we get these trains. Okay, so... Let's say... Let's say a train just passed her. So it's moving at some speed r, and there's another train coming up from behind. I'm going to color the trains because I have a train track and it's also black. So the trains will be red. So there's a train coming, uh, the train just passed her, let's say. So we know it'll be 10 minutes till this next train comes up. And it's moving at the same speed. So it takes the train three minutes to get here, where this train passed lit. That's because trains are released every three minutes. They're moving at a constant speed. The trains are three minutes behind each other. But it takes ten minutes. So let's call the distance between the two trains D. So my speed R is going to be D over three d kilometers over three minutes. Uh, we can change that to hours eventually. It doesn't really matter. Um, okay. So we know they cover distance d in three minutes. But by the time train number two here gets to where train number one is, Lynn has already moved down by uh, 60 kilometers per hour by th in three minutes. So uh, three three minutes, by the way, is one twentieth of an hour. So R would be d or twenty d kilometers per hour. And so it's, all I need to do is find this distance d here between two trains. So so here we're at we're at some time. There's Lynn and Train have just met. And there's another train coming, distance D behind. And three minutes later, so we'll call this time zero. Three minutes later, this train two has caught up to this point. Now train one is again distance D ahead. But Lynn has gone... Um, so one twentieth of an hour, so Lynn has gone three kilometers. Okay. 
Now, if, now, three kilometers has to be less than this distance D. Otherwise, she'd actually she'd be the one passing trains, not trains passing her. All right, every ten minutes she is passed by a train. So I guess the trains do have to be going faster than her. Okay, but she's going pretty quickly anyway. So after three minutes, she's gone three kilometers. 60 kilometers per hour is really just one kilometer per minute because there's 60 minutes in an hour. So now Lynn's here, somewhere behind train one, but still ahead of train two. Now, in, in a total of 10 minutes, T2 has gone... So Lynn is... Uh, Lynn, has, Lynn goes a distance uh, in 10 minutes of 10 kilometers. Our train in 10 minutes has gone D plus 10 kilometers. So, and it's going at a constant speed, so R is D plus 10 over 10 minutes, which is a sixth of an hour. So that's uh, 6D plus 60 kilometers per hour. And now I have two equations here. I can equate solve for D and thus therefore solve for R. So 20D is 6D plus 60. So 14D is equal to 60 kilometers per hour. D is going to be, uh, divide both sides by 2, 7. So D is 30 over 7. And so R is going to be 20 times D, or 600 over 7 kilometers per hour. So there's our final answer. 600 over 7 kilometers per hour is how far or how fast the trains are going. And that is slightly faster than 60 kilometers per hour. Because that would be 600 over 10. So a smaller numerator or smaller denominator means it's a bigger number. Okay, so that all makes sense. All right, wasn't so bad. Just the, the trick to this question was understanding the organiz organizational relationship. And I have found that, you know, just pick a time that you're interested in and say, okay, what happens, you know, a certain number of minutes later, a certain number of minutes after that. And we know after 10 minutes, they've caught up. Okay. So that was uh, A part 7A. Let's take a look now at 7B. Determine all pairs AB of real numbers that satisfy the following system of equations. Oh, okay, we've got some logarithms here. Scary, scary logarithms. Uh, root A plus root B is equal to 8. Let's copy these down. And log base 10, which typically is just written as log with no base. That's how common it is. It's that one and base E that people really care about. And that's got to be equal to 2, right? Give your answer with exact numbers. Okay. So two things to note right off the bat, and actually this, this happened with our uh, sign question as well. There are, there are particular conditions that we get right off the bat from having these equations exist. You can't have square roots of a negative number. You can't have logarithms of a negative number. In fact, you can't even have logarithms of zero. Uh, so we can stay right away. A and B must be positive. Okay? Can't be negative or they wouldn't go in the first equation. Can't be zero, they wouldn't go in the second equation. There is no log base 10 of zero. What would I raise 10 to the power of to get zero? And don't say zero. 10 to the zero is one. Okay? See a lot of students who do that. All right. So, um, so we got this, and this will help us weed out bad solutions later, maybe. Um, we can combine this side log uh, the, the sum of two logs is just the product of the insides as a log 
And now this equation, I mean, all logarithms are based off the same idea. Uh, log base x of y is equal to z is just a rearrangement, just a restatement of the exact same fact that uh, x to the z is equal to y. So this means that ab is 10 to the 2 or 100. Okay. <clears throat> um, <coughs> okay. Um, now, what can we do about this first equation? Uh, let's square the first equation. Get rid of those square root signs. We'll get uh, root a squared, which is a. Uh, we'll get 2 root a b, but that's okay because I understand what a b is and therefore what root a b is. Uh, and that's going to be equal to 64. Root a b is equal to 10. So a plus 20 plus b is equal to 64. A plus b is 44. And combining that with the fact that a b is 100, we can get a nice little quadratic that we should be able to solve. These are going to be roots of a quadratic. So, uh, a, B are roots of X squared minus 44 X plus 100. Right, because that would be X minus A, X minus B. Negative of A plus B goes here, and uh, A, B goes here. So, yeah, A and B are just the two pairs of roots for this equation. So we're going to get two possible pairs, A, B, uh, but they're just going to be copies of each other. So x equals negative b plus or minus square root b squared. I don't know what 44 squared is off the top of my head. Minus 4ac all over 2a. So 44 plus or minus. I'm going to grab my calculator. 44 squared is uh, 1,900 and... 36 minus 400 all over 2. So this is 44 plus or minus square root of 1536 all over 2. Uh, let's divide by 2. So um, what can I do? I can take out you can take out a factor of 4 here. That's clear. And I can take out another factor of 4. So I can get uh, 4 root 96, but root 96 has a 16 in it as well. So I can take out another 4. 4 times 4 is 16, so we'll get 16 root 6. All over 2, so it's going to be 22 plus or minus 8 root 6. Okay. Does this make sense? Well, yeah, uh, both of these will add up to 44, because the pluses and minuses will cancel out. And then uh, by difference of squares, we'll have 22 squared minus 64 times 6, which will be 100. Um, and that's really as simple as we can make it. So a, b equals, so either a is the plus 1 and b is the minus 1, uh, or a is the minus 1. B is the plus one, but they both have to be roots here. Now let's just double check. Twenty-two minus eight root six. I mean eight times root six. That could cause a problem, but it's nineteen point five nine something, so it's going to be less than twenty-two. So when we subtract, this will all be fine. Okay. Got to remember, A and B have to be positive. So we we needed to be a little worried there because maybe we were getting B or A being negative, but it's okay. 8 root 6 is less than 20, so 22 minus something less than 20 is going to be uh, bigger than 3. Okay, so there's our pairs A, B, and that finishes off question number 7. we got three more questions to go. I will see you in the next video for question number 8.